I came on and I just happened to glance and see this thing running across the yard. A good sized man or something looked like a man. I don't know what it was, just it ran across the yard. Okay. You've had problems in the neighborhood before? Yeah, my dog was killed. He was recently killed. Yeah, and Everybody, I'm Adam Noyce. And I'm Bill Mercer. And welcome to the second episode of the Afterthoughts of Finding Bigfoot. Uh, there wasn't, I have to apologize, there wasn't an episode uh, last week because of the scheduling of uh, Animal Planet, uh, where they had, what was it called? The Puppy Bowl. Oh yeah, that's so entertaining. So important to the rights of animals, watching them run around in a circle and bite each other. Right, right. So anyways, uh, let's talk about the episode. Um, I guess the first thing that I, I've got to just uh, talk about is what stuck out to you in the episode. I'm going to change it up a little bit. What stuck out to you in the episode? What well, most stuck out to me, well, one is the, one of the personal encounters they went to, and that was the one where um, the guy saw it, and it was, uh, it was on a rock. Uh, his legs hung out and then got off the rock and bounded down the hill. That was the sighting that they talked about that most stuck out to me. Um, but the main kind of specific thing was um, the, the way that they called it the wood booger. I thought that was so funny. You couldn't call it something. The South needs better names or something. The wood booger, <laughs> really? <laughs> It is. But, it's ridiculous. But the one thing I liked about it was that it proved that they've been there a long time and that they're part of the culture. And that says something to me. That they're so embedded in the culture and that they're historically been, they've historically been cited. This isn't something that just happened after the, the, the Patterson put. This is something that's been reported and happening for over 100 years. And stuff like that really tells me that, um, that it really just shows that it makes it more believable that this has been going on for so many years, and less and less that it could have been a hoax. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, but that, and also that particular sighting, um, because there's just nothing else it could have been. I mean, really, when you logically think about it, the way it bounded down the hill, how clearly they saw it, how close range, and what the creature did, there's, no, there's nothing else it could have been. It couldn't have been a bear, definitely couldn't have been a guy in a suit, and there's just nothing else it could have been. Yeah, and I felt that way too. Uh, as I said in the previous episode, half of these people that they go to in the town meetings, though, so yeah, I like the idea of the town meetings. I don't believe in hardly any of the stories that they talk about. And this was another case of where I felt skeptical, but once they got done and uh, the fact that they actually showed up at the real location um, really sort of sparked yeah, me was... like, yeah, I really, I believe in this guy's story uh, more because of, because of that. And it's sort of the only thing that I could really think of was that it could have caught the uh, Sasquatch off guard, maybe? Yeah. Um, because, I mean, he said it was sitting. And when it saw him, it howled, which... I love that, the fact that it howled. Uh, which, you know what, I, I honestly think that it, um, if it was Sasquatch, it could have been... There could have been more around there, and it was warning the others that there was a there's a dude walking out here, um, or something like that. Uh, it's a bus, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, what? I think that's what Sasquatch is. Just a bunch of hippies that you know. <laughs> just let their hair grow all the way. Just down. let their hair grow. Uh, you know. Sasquatch is yeah. Right. No. <laughs> well, no, that would be dumb. <laughs> Yeah, but I just, that's what really captivated me about it, and the fact that it uh, darted downhill so quickly. Um, see, that was actually the one part where I was really skeptical about it, um, was the fact that it ran down, he said it ran down the hill so quickly. The only thing that I could think of was that great apes, like gorillas, um, they leap. Yeah, and he said it was more of a bound than just a stride, you know? I mean, when you're bounding, you're kind of taking short jumps. Kind of reminded of the Incredible Hulk. Um, the way they... Okay, alright. How did I guess you were going to bring that up? 
I'll probably put like a little subtitle here that says warning geek alert or something like that. If you do that, I will kill you. No. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was definitely, it wanted to get out of there. Right. Uh, certainly. It wasn't, and um, it's rare that kind of thing. Usually they come to you. It's usually not um, that, that you go to them and you infiltrate their territory. Uh, one of the big things that um, I believe Jeff Meldrum brought up in one uh, expedition was that he said um, you can't really stalk one because they're so stealthy and they only come out in certain occasions. Um, I, I've always stuck with that idea and I, that's one theory that I definitely believe. And this was the rare exception. They, they stalked one. Or I don't even know if they even stalked one, but they just sort of... Well, yeah, but they, they, the Sasquatch didn't know they were there originally. Usually, right. they go to them because they're curious. This was not a curiosity thing. This was, oh, crap, I've, I've been seen. Yeah. Um, and that stuck out in my mind. Um, the other sighting that stuck out to me that I do not believe in, uh, now that I've watched it again, is the one with the girl going to the mailbox or something like that. She turns around from, like, 800 yes. feet away, she sees it. I'm like, no, I don't really believe that. I could see a Bigfoot doing something like that, just sort of, like, watching her. But from that far away, you can't tell what the hell that is. Uh, you, you simply can't without having, like, binoculars or something. Right. Because, again, this is from my own personal experience when I was hunting one day. We saw this large black thing up on top of uh, a hill, and it looked like there were two separate things walking up on two legs. But uh, I never, th I didn't, I wasn't thinking in my head, oh look, a Bigfoot. Uh, I wasn't saying that. Uh, and what I did is I just put up my binoculars, and it was a moose, uh, a big, 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 big bull moose uh, standing up there. And from that far of a distance, it looks like it's two upright things. And so that's another reason why whenever I look at things, I look at things very, very, very skeptically. Which, I gotta say this, I was very happy with Cliff in this episode. Um, yes, me too. I'm learning to like Cliff a lot more. As, as the episodes continue, I like Cliff a lot more because uh, he, when they were calling and something answered back, he's like, ah, I think that's a coyote. Yeah, I like how objective this episode was, which I thought... Um, I want to get into um, another sighting in, in a minute um, that was that Bobo investigated because I want to criticize his objectivity. Um, but um, the one thing that they're definitely starting starting to improve on is their objectivity, and Cliff is Cliff was very objective in this episode. I was very pleased with it um, in that last night investigation. Um, I also want to get into the tactic they used a little later uh, with the, the powder. I thought that was genius. Yeah, well, I, like I haven't seen it done before. Uh, I thought it was cool. Mm -hmm. Definitely hasn't been tried before, but something that they need to try more often, I think, is the need to use aerial um, heat vision or that... I think that, you yeah. know what I'm talking about, I think they need to do that a little bit more because clearly the show has the budget to do it. Yeah, they, they only used it once, and actually, it's actually funny, I watched that episode today, too. Um, they only used it once, and they, they got a really, really eventful night investigation out of it. They knew exactly where to go, and they trapped it, and they got a lot of activity. Um, I would love, that, they'd love it if they did that more often. Um, but the thing I want to kind of criticize is, um, well, first of all, I wanted to bring this up about the site you just brought up, uh, which was uh, the girl who saw it uh, going to her mailbox. Two things. One... There's a lot of problem with um, subjectivity in these sightings. And I mean that we don't, sometimes we don't know how far away things are. Um, I want to talk about the first video they looked at, which was the ATVs cruising through the creek and they see this little brown speck move across the frame. Um, that thing was damn far away when they did the recreation and they showed how far away it was. Um, and it looked a little more obvious in the video because we were actually seeing the live footage. Um, and that's a major problem with Bigfoot sightings is that they can be so far away. And like you brought up with your little anecdote about the moose, things look different um, up close than they do far away. They can look like something moving on two legs that's actually moving on four legs. Right. Um, and also, I want to say, I actually watched the footage on my own. I typed up on YouTube. And I do believe that that was either... I do believe that that was either a man just sort of walking, uh, because it, clearly somebody could walk in there, or it's CG. 
Because what I found that was really funny about the video is that it pops out of nowhere. It's like it fades. It, it just fades and then goes away. And to me, it looks CG. Also, they looked like they planned the reaction to it. I don't know about you. But he stops and turns. Just like, kind of like acting a little. I didn't believe that one particular story. Um, but I, I couldn't, we can't really say anything because the guy barely told us anything about it. He was the one who was the closest, closest to it. He was drastically closer to it than the camera was. And he barely said anything. Yeah. And a problem with Bigfoot sightings, often, is that people don't follow them. With cameras. And I get it, you're scared, but come on. You know, grow some balls, go after it. Maybe that's easy, maybe that's easy for me to say because I wasn't the one there, but um, I don't know, I'd be, hell, I'd be freaking curious to chase the thing. Or to at least follow it from a reasonable distance. I don't want to get right up in its face, but, you know... <laughs> Well, and the thing that they also bring up is that you can you can see Bubbles' recreation. You can see that uh, he had clothes on. You can see the different different in and uh, clothes. But if somebody was hunting, you don't wear different. HD camera. Hmm. They were using an HD camera. You could see colors more flu uh, fluently. Well, you know? yeah, but I mean, even in a video, if somebody's out hunting, like what I do frequently, you don't wear jeans and other colors. You wear one single color. Or you wear like a series of one single color, like camouflage, the same type of camouflage. So you can't really see from a distance the differentiates in, um, or the differences in, in colors and the contrasts. Right, of course. And of course that was, that, that shot was taken uh, far away. The only thing, and I gotta give again Cliff props for bringing this up, is he brought up that when you kind of, you know, Acknowledge that they're there. Like, hey, don't run me over. Yeah, and that was something that popped up in my mind too. Um, it's kind of a small thing, and it's something that's not really going to give you much conclusive. Say, oh yeah, that could have been a Bigfoot now because the guy didn't wave at them. But I, I definitely have to say that that's a good point to bring up. But again, that's I'm just going to say I. There. Yeah. Again, I just want to say that I do believe that this footage was fake. But the part that bugged me uh, a little bit was um, when Renee said uh, it doesn't follow the normal Bigfoot story. Why would a Bigfoot be there when you have ATVs and, and stuff going up this, this brook? And what propped up into my mind is it's loud there. If a brook is going, it's really loud. Perhaps it didn't hear it. Right, perhaps it, even though I don't think it's real, um, perhaps it didn't hear them. And by the time it walked out, it was too late. Or maybe it didn't even wind up seeing it. I don't know. Uh, Remember how far away that thing was from the, even the guy who was closer to it. Right. Um, and uh, now I'd like to get into the other, the other story with the girl uh, and the distance problem. Um, she looked at it really quick. Really quick. Yeah. And... When you're looking at something from far away really quick, your mind does whatever the hell it wants. Whatever suits your emotions best at that particular moment, it's going to create in your mind. She glanced at it and darted up the hill. Quick personal anecdote. When I was a child, I used to go and play in this, again, I have a house upstate, squatchy, squatchy country. Um, well, there's only been a couple sightings, but anyway. Uh, we were down playing in this creek. Um, and... We heard a crack, and I glanced over, and he always joking around, because I was a kid who believed in Bigfoot, and I knew all the stories, and he always joking over and get killed by a Bigfoot, you know, stuff like that, and we get down to this creek, and, I, you know, I'm, I'm the oldest there, I'm the tallest there, and the minute I hear this crack and glance over, I'm like, it's a Sasquatch, run! You know, and the problem was that, one, I glanced at it too quick, could have been, been a tree, all I know, and a brass falling. Right. Um, and I ran up the hill. It could have been anything. The mind plays tricks on you, and that's the thing that Renee said, and I agree with it. Yeah. And, um, 